I'm going to show you how to set up a color correction workspace inside Premiere and also talk briefly about your color correction physical environment, the environment in which you work. So to follow along, go to Working Files, go to Premiere Pro Projects, and open up Examples. This is a project that I've set up for several upcoming lessons. We're just going to use it for demonstration purposes now. This is the default editing workspace that you see when you first open up Premiere Pro. This will probably look different than yours because we work at a lower resolution than is recommended by Adobe. At Infinite Skills, we record our screens at 1280 by 720 because that ensures we have sharp looking text on basically any platform. The main difference between a standard editing workspace and a color correction workspace is that you open up something called a reference monitor. You may not have worked with a reference monitor before, but it will become a good friend of yours because it has scopes in it and you use those scopes to really help you nail down your color correction changes. So to go to a color correction oriented workspace, we just go up to Window, click on Workspace, and go over to Color Correction like that. So this looks similar to the editing workspace, but there are some differences. Here's the Source Monitor, that's the Program Monitor, but down here is the Reference Monitor. The Reference Monitor looks for all the world like the Program Monitor. It shows what's inside the timeline, but it's independent from the Program Monitor. I'll show you what I mean. If I take the play it here and play it back and forth, you'll see that we're operating independently from the Program Monitor, which is not what we want to do. We want what we see down here to be what's up here because we're going to switch this view down here to scopes and we want those scopes to accurately reflect what's going on inside the timeline. So I need to gang this to the program monitor and I do that by clicking this button down here. We gang it to the program monitor. Now nothing happens yet, but once I start moving this around a little bit, it'll pop to the program monitor like that. So that's the first step. There you go. In my case, this is going to be kind of a small reference monitor. I want to make it larger. So I'm going to move it and then adjust the size of it in just a moment. To move something to a different frame, I go to the upper left hand corner here, there's a grabber bar there, a bunch of little parallel lines there. Click on them and drag it. You'll see that we go to another frame. And you get that rectangle, meaning that you can drop it inside the frame. There we go, we've dropped that reference monitor in that frame. I want to have this tab be to the left. I want it to be the top thing here. So I drag it to the left here, get it to the very first position by taking the scroll bar there and dragging it all the way to the left hand side like so, there you go. So it's first. Source monitor really is not going to be that important when I'm doing color correction, so I'm going to take the project panel and move it over one notch by taking its little grab bar there and sliding over one notch. So now we've got these four tabs, that one there, that one there, source, and then the audio on the right-hand side. I want to make it a little bit larger by pulling it down, and I want to take the timeline and expand it, so I'm going to drag it to the right like that. And now I'm a happy camper. Now you can set up your color correction workspace any way you want, but this one works for me. So I want to save this as a workspace preset. So to do that, I go up to Window, Workspace, New Workspace, call this one Jeff's Workspace, click OK. I may pull this reference monitor out of the frame once in a while to give you a bigger view of the reference monitor, but for now we'll leave it like this. Now the next step is to change the reference monitor from this composite video view, which matches this one, to the scopes. Now there are various different kinds of scope views, but I'm going to show you the sort of overall scope view here. The way you access the scopes is by going to the panel menu, which is always in the upper right hand corner there. I'm going to change it to all scopes. There are the four scopes that we're going to work with. We're actually going to work with only three of them, but I do want to show you all four of them at some point here. Now that basically finishes our color correction setup here, but I do want to show you one more advantage of this thing. If I click on this particular clip there, it's got an effect added to it. It's the fast color corrector. So you see how much real estate we've got here in the effect controls panel, which is nice. I want to expand the real estate a little bit by closing the timeline. We don't really need the timeline all that often when we're working with color correction. We don't do much keyframing. So I'm going to take this little triangle there, that disclosure triangle, and I'm going to hide the timeline view. That gives me a little bit more real estate as well. So now I'm happy with this particular layout. We can always switch this thing back and forth like that anyway. So I'm going to just close this thing down in a moment. But before I do that, I want to talk about your physical environment. A lot of people are concerned about their monitors. They want to calibrate their monitors. They want to work in an environment where the lighting is controlled. There's no sunlight coming into the room, things like that. And that's fine, but most folks can't afford that kind of setup, and it's kind of impractical for typical users of video editing products. And so I'm here to tell you that it's not that important to have a calibrated monitor. If you're working with scopes, that reduces the need to have calibrated monitors in controlled environments. Besides, most monitors these days are pretty good and pretty consistent. So I wouldn't worry too much about your environment. Even if you're working in a perfect environment, people see color and tonality differently anyways, and so you could have the perfect environment and could still make color correction mistakes because your eyes can fool you. Just keep in mind we're going to rely on scopes to a large degree when we work inside Premiere Pro to ensure that our color correction goes well. So there you go. That's how you set up your color correction workspace.